Well, we have a good show for you today. Welcome into this Tuesday edition of First Take. Timbaland will join us later on. Looking forward to that. And the NBA is back. So much to get into. As always, your boys both in the house. Skip Bayless, Stephen A. Smith. I'm Molly Karam. Gentlemen, good day. Good morning, Molly. How are you? Molly, I, I actually, I was forced to share a makeup space with I Stephen A. Smith, that. the biggest diva at ESPN this morning. I was forced out of my space I into saw his. That. I and walked it, it into the bonding It completely disrupted my flow, and and I'm completely out of sorts. I I I got he no walked, shot today. He walked into the makeup room and was upset that other human beings were there because he's used to having the whole room Can you to blame himself. Him? They're gonna call me a diva. Too. I get you it. got to be crazy. And, What's up, big boy? All that? What's up? We got a shake. Yes, sir. All right, here yes, we sir. go. Let's make it. Happen. All right, let's work. We'll get right into the story. Everyone is talking about Greg Hardy. Now, we just heard Jason Garrett say it wasn't the time or place, but Hardy will not be punished for braiding the Cowboys special teams coach. Skip, how do you feel about this? Before I launch, l let me first say that once again, Jerry Jones has become the biggest and easiest target in all of sports thanks to this Greg Hardy incident. And just for the record, I think so far up to this moment, Jerry Jones has been very unfairly condemned over the Greg Hardy incident because he said right after the game, the only time that I know f for sure that he has spoken about this, we're waiting for him to speak here today about this incident. He said after the game, I did not see it, but this is what I think in general of Greg Hardy. I think he has been, I'm just paraphrasing Jerry, a leader on this football team. Now, let me restate my position once again. You will, you will reiterate what I did. I said from the start, I would not have signed Greg Hardy. I think he's a despicable human being for all that he did and, and effectively got away with in Carolina. Obviously, his conviction was overturned because when it went to a jury trial, she did not show up. And we presume, and the police indicated, she was bought off. Okay, because of all that, I would have said no. But uh, I. And, and I was the first to say, Stephen A., that I was embarrassed and ashamed by the first interview he did when he became eligible, during which that interview he showed zero remorse. And as you, you all remember, he, he, given his past, he made a very insensitive remark about Tom Brady's wife. Yes. Mm -hmm. But bottom line, now that he is a cowboy, and I am obviously a cowboy fan, I said I will root for him as part of my Dallas Cowboys. Mm -hmm. I do not believe off what I saw the other night that he deserves to be fined or suspended or in any way further punished over what happened because I did not think it was that big a deal. I simply thought the way J Jason Garrett did, and I was happy Jason amended his stance uh, uh, of the other night in which yesterday Jason Garrett said, look, I appreciate, I'm paraphrasing again, I appreciate the passion, the rage to win, but he has to learn to channel it in different ways. And obviously, as I said yesterday, you cannot unleash into the middle of a special teams huddle in which they are trying to prepare for how they are going to return the subsequent mm -hmm. kickoff. So I said, I'm okay with the passion. I'm not okay with the win that he showed it. Obviously, Greg Hardy works better on a team that is winning football games. He's much easier to manage, control, coach when you are winning. He can turn into a bigger and bigger problem if you keep losing, and they very well might keep losing, so that problem may increase. But when Stephen Jones said yesterday on his radio show that they're, are, they're already thinking about signing him for the long term, I got no problem with that. You know why? He can play. And again, that rage to win, it, it translates into sacks. He has three so far. I'm sure he'll have more before this season is over. So long term, I'm going to say this one more time. Jerry Jones is not running a church league football team. <laughs> Jerry Jones is not running a Boy Scout troop. Jerry Jones is trying to win football games just as he did back in the 1990s when he helped build a dynasty that was filled with a lot of players who did not belong on a church league team or a Boy Scout troop. So to me, I'm just going with business as usual with Greg Hardy. Your thoughts? In the Bible Belt, so mm -hmm. fitting. I just want to make sure mm -hmm. I'm clear in what I heard. Mm -hmm. Um, I hear what you're saying, right? Right? Mm hmm But are you coming to the defense of Jerry Jones? Yes, I am. This? Is that what you're doing? Yes, I am. I I'm just want, saying that... I just, want, I just want to make sure I was clear yes, what I, I heard. Well, I thank you I, I'm not going to be a hypocrite here, but I, I wouldn't have signed him, I, I, but I, I, I understand I, I, why Jerry Jones did. I, I get thank it. You, I thank you for doing All that. All right. Let me say for the record, 
I have no problem with the Dallas Cowboys signing Greg Hardy because from a business perspective, not only can he play, but it's a minimal risk because he's basically there on a game-by-game -game basis and any given week that goes by, mm -hmm. they can let him go. This is a guy that's played two games, has three sacks already, and Lord knows how many hits, but they're in the double digits. Yeah, they are. Considering what he did to Tom Brady and then what he did to Eli Manning yep. in terms of the hits that he's laid on them. So to me, from a business perspective, as it pertains to the National Football League, it would appear to be a plausible, reasonable mm -hmm. business investment because mm -hmm. he supposedly helps yep. more than he hurts. Fine. Mm -hmm. What I find myself, however, laughing about and thinking about is that ultimately, me being the guy that has taken it upon myself to consistently mind the world of the perennial losers that the Dallas Cowboys have mm -hmm. become their playoff appearance in 12 and 4 record last season. I've never heard you say that before. Okay. I, 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 I've I, forgotten that. I, I Thank you for I, reminding me. I just believe mm -hmm. that, years, you know, yeah. 20 years without a Super yeah. Bowl championship, Wait, three victories, 20? three victories. I've forgotten that. Three victories, okay. three playoff victories in that time. I don't need to go there. Mm. Here's where I'd like to go, Skip Bayless. All right, please do. You know, I have been on the record on many occasions in the past mm. making the case that the Dallas Cowboys are not America's team. Mm. It should be the New England Patriots. Mm. They've got the star-studded quarterback with the supermodel for a mm. wife. They've got the, 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 the owner in Mr. Kraft, mm -hmm. who I believe to be class personified. They have the genius in Bill Belichick, Spygate or not. The man has four Super Bowl titles on his resume just with the Patriots, not to mention the two Bill Parcells got with him as the defensive coordinator. Okay, so I look at all of those things, those six rings mm -hmm. that Bill Belichick has. I think about all of those things that I say to Patriots, but here's the number one reason that you could you should consider them America's team as opposed to just wins and losses. Why do you win? How do you win? It's Mr. Kraft who would have never brought Grady on, uh, 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 you know, on Hardy, I'm sorry. He would have never brought Greg Hardy mm -hmm. on board. He would have never done that. It's Bill Belichick who Jason Garrett can't even be mentioned in the same sentence as. The same Bill Belichick, if that was happening on his sideline, mm -hmm. with a player walking into the huddle and interrupting the special teams coach and slapping the chalkboard down, he might have been off the team. Mm -hmm. Forget about a suspension. He might have been gone. He might have been cut that day because Bill Belichick is not going to tolerate it. We watched, Gre we watched Jason Garrett while Des Bryant was getting in his face and other players were pushing him out of the huddle. Jason Garrett is standing right there. Doesn't say a word. Nope. Does nothing. You wouldn't have you would have thought he was some positional coach. He is the head coach of the Dallas Cowboys. And that man stood there and did nothing. The special teams coach pushed him away. Teammates were pushing him away. Des Bryant was getting in his face. And what was Jason Garrett doing? Not a thing. Talk about passive. Then we get, of course, to the quarterback. Mm -hmm. As great as Tony Romo is, yeah. two playoff victories in his 10 years as a quarterback. Okay. All right, Tom, you can't use the excuse, oh, well, this guy was a first-round pick, but look at Tony Romo. No, Tom Brady was no first round, no second round, no third round, no fourth round. That is Tom Brady we're talking about here, who's one of the greatest, most epic stories in the history of sports annals, considering where he came from and to where he is today. So when you look at all of those different things, you, Skip Bayless, mm -hmm. who is the cowboy lover that you mm -hmm. are, even though you did pick the Patriots, mm -hmm. even though I know you love some Tom Brady. Yes, I but do. the cowboy lover that yeah. you are, to sit there with that face of yours, with that, with that, with that grin on your face, mm -hmm. knowing that you root for your Cowboys, yeah. knowing your standard of excellence and how the Cowboys do nothing to live up to what you proclaim to be the case. I would dare make the argument right here on first take that the great Skip Bayless should be absolutely positively ashamed of himself. You should be just, just, just ashamed. How could you sit up there? Actually, you almost owe American apology. You should actually walk off the set. Oh. Rather okay. than talk about your Cowboys. Okay, you finished? Go ahead.
Now, America, could I have my camera? Thank you yeah, very you much. Go ahead. Take America, the you know and I know how ashamed that man <clears throat> should be of the argument he just made. Why? I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn my attention to that Why? man. Why? Why? Why was it up your seat? Ashamed? First of all, let's do this two-pronged here. Okay. The first prong is what Jerry Jones <coughs> accomplished as the general manager of the Dallas Cowboys back in the early 1990s when his team should have won four straight Super Bowls, did win three out of four. Remember those days? That's, yeah, it was a long time okay. ago, but okay. it's all right. That team was built on a, a, sort of a, a foundation of lawbreakers and troublemakers. What was the key move that Jerry Jones made? He went and traded for a Charles Haley who was deemed too hot to handle in San Francisco, way more trouble than he was worth and brought him to Dallas. And that was the catalyst that prompted three Super Bowl victories. He was the key piece that they added. Remember what Michael Irvin used three? to do? For the three? Yeah, they won. I mean, that last one, I, I remember a guy named Prime Prime Tom Deion Sanders that right. had something to do but, with but that listen, one. The pass rusher, the difference maker on all three of those teams was Charles. Well, they, lo well, they lost to San Francisco in the NFC Championship game. Okay. Barry switched his first year. I and, said you know, they Haley won was three like, out of four, but, but they should have won all four. But of what them. I'm saying to you is that I think getting Prime Time ensured okay. right, the third. That helped with the last one. The last one. Only the last one. The last of the year. Okay, the last of the three. Do you remember what Michael Irvin used to do when he was in Dallas? Do, do I even have to count the ways and no. all the trouble that he got into? Right. Do you happen to remember Eric Williams and all the trouble that he got no. into uh -huh. as an all pro? Keep tackle? going. You're you just remember, digging yourself you a deeper Nate, hole. You, you, keep digging. Do you remember Nate Newton and all the trouble he got keep into? Digging, keep, Mark keep, keep digging. Mark Tune and all the trouble he keep got into. Keep digging. That was that team. Yes. That team was a gladiator team because it's a gladiator Ooh. sport. And Jerry and Jimmy Johnson said, Bring those guys on because all we care about is that they show up on time and they play <laughs> their back ends off. And they showed That's up right. on time right. and they won. Right. Okay, now let's switch off to the new America's team, according to you. Sure, good. Although the original Tom Brady was actually Roger Staubach, who was every bit of Tom Brady as far as being the... the perfect role except, model. Except for field. when he went up against Terry Bradshaw okay, and the fine. Pittsburgh that's Steelers, fine. but go ahead. All right. So we look at these New England Patriots under the great Mr. Kraft that you talk about. I have made great the Mr. case. Kraft. Yeah, I, I have made the case on this show that the the New England Patriots have actually turned into the Raiders East. That remember the great late great Al Davis. That all of a sudden Bill Belichick has turned into Al Davis, taking high risk characters on player after player that had gray area background, starting with how about high risk Aaron Hernandez? Did they not draft That's Aaron? That's not fair. Oh, it's very That's fair. fair. There were red That's flags everywhere That's about fair. Aaron Hernandez. No, skip. There were red flags skip, skip, all skip. over him at Florida. Florida. Before, before we move on, all before over we him. move on to yes. other players. Mm -hmm. Don't tell me there were red you flags to there. double to murder. I mean, oh, oh, not, come on now. Well, there were, that, that he had been scary. involved in a couple things at Florida that were really iffy. Skip, skip, okay. a murder skip. There, 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 no, there was no, okay. I, nobody saw that. Okay. Not that skip. Mr. Kraft Go. oversaw and signed off on the drafting of Aaron Hernandez. We got to start there. How about I think when? That's wrong. Okay, remember when they brought in Corey Dillon? This is high risk. Yeah. Okay, he'd had all kinds of right, issues. Right, I don't want to go into right. all the background. Right. How about Albert Hainsworth? Keep going. How about Randy Moss, who Al Davis even said, "I cannot deal with this guy. He's finished here. He's more trouble than he's worth." Can, and Bill Belichick can, can, said, can, can, "I'll try. Can, can, can I'll I try." Interject? Can yeah. I interject? Can I jump okay. into this? All right. Let's take those things. Here's the difference. I don't have to go player by player. I'm going system I, I'm by system. I'm just getting started. No, no. I'm just I'm, getting I'm, started. I'm, I'm just, uh, uh, listen to me. Raiders I'm going system East. by system. I'm saying to you, you can bring up any players you want. I remember all about it. Aaron Hernandez, Corey Dillon, Randy Moore. I get all of that. Here's the difference. Those dudes went to a place where an iron fist was present okay. in Bill Belichick. You don't have, I mean, you talk, You call Floyd Money Mayweather a pillow puncher. The pillow puncher is Jason Garrett. That's the pillow puncher. I mean, what does he do? I mean, everything doesn't matter what happens. We, we, we've just got to get things together. Okay. Right? Uh, but, no, but that's you're, you're obviously me that not the right way a... to do things. And we, we talked about it and we'll just move on. That's all he does. You actually look. For the owner to speak, the owner has his own I, I gotta radio finish. spot. I got to finish my Go list ahead. real quick. Go ahead. These are, are high-risk players that they took a flyer on, okay? Right. The Patriots of Mr. That, Kraft. Oh, please. Brandon Spikes. Go Brandon ahead. Merriweather. That's right. Garrett Blunt. Hold on, wait a minute. Akib Tlaib. They, wait a second. Dante Stallworth. Wait a minute. Alfonso Dinner. They Dinnard. didn't cause trouble 
with the Patriots. Uh, they all Whatever. did. No, eventually, no, no. They no, all no, had their no, little no. issues. And they were gone, and they were gone. when they had them. They were gone. That's they the tried. point. Hold on. Okay. Nobody said that the Patriots were devoid of issues. Okay. I'm talking about how you deal with the issues. You look at Greg Hardy. I'm not sitting there. I don't know enough about this guy. I know what's been reported. I know what happened in court at the bench trial and, yeah. then, the, and then, then the jury trial. That was, I know about that. You hear about stuff in Carolina. Now you're hearing about stuff in Dallas. But at the end of the day, what it comes down to is that you have an owner in Dallas desperate to win at all costs. Don't you dare mention any cowboy from the last 20 years hey, in the same, hold on, in the same breath as Michael Irvin. Don't you dare be that disrespectful because you, co look, you told me, you told me, and I know this to be true, but you even said to me, Michael Irvin was considered one of the greatest teammates ever. Teammates. Love these him. guys, these I are, want him on my team. No, 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 but I'm That's saying, not the question. Yeah, but the problem is, we don't know that about Greg Hardy. He didn't look like a great teammate. Okay, they've lost four straight games, and he fell right into the middle of it. Okay. Let's see what happens if it turns okay. around. Does he become a positive leader? Yeah. Okay. And last we'll quick see. point I about agree with that. America's team. Let's and, see. And I love me some Tom Brady. Heck, I love the Patriots. But there's only one coach in the National Football League I know got busted for cheating. There's only one that I know of, and his name is Belichick. I agree. Am I right? I agree with that. Spygate, I agree. busted. I agree with that. But what does it say to you about how great he is when even when you catch him cheating, and then he goes out there after Spygate and wins mm -hmm. 17 consecutive regular season games after that. They okay. go undefeated right. in the regular season, okay, undefeated to the right. Super Bowl. But, but oh, finally, you, you the man oh, is great. It's the man opinion. is great. It's, it's your opinion, not mine that the quarterback for Mr. Kraft's team cheated and lied about it during Deflategate, Tom Brady. You That's what whatever. you think. No, okay? what I said was is that this man, don't tell me you didn't know anything about it. Okay. But I don't consider it a big deal. I don't. I really don't. All right.